Hey, it's Mike. I'm back. Hopefully you had a chance to look at my teaser video. This is really just the full video where we go back to the Pacific and do another yacht delivery. So let's get on with the story of seasickness, catching sea monsters, making videos, sailing under perfect conditions, and generally having a good time. <laughs> Grandpa's undies hanging on the line. Yeah. If you're like me, you're fascinated by boats. This is a Genoa 53, actually quite a modern boat compared to the Tayana 52, even though they're almost the same length overall. So just to give you a quick rundown, the Genoa is 15,000 kilos, whereas the Tayana 52 was 17,500 kilos. The Genoa is 14 meters on the waterline, whereas the Tayana 52 was only 12. So it's a lighter boat and it's got a longer waterline length, so it's going to be faster. The next thing we've got to sort out is just exactly how do you pronounce the name? No can do. No can do. No can do. It's like no can do. No can do. No can do. With more of a Scottish accent, please. No can do. No can do. Okay, no. No can do. No can do. Well, if you're a whiskey aficionado, you probably already know that Nakondo is a bottle of whiskey from a place in Scotland called Nakondo. Last words, in case we never make it. There's nothing dangerous about what we're about to do. It's just going to be spoken with true confidence. It's going to be just a breeze. So, just to get this story moving, the inevitable boring checkout process, which involves sitting around for hours waiting for someone to come and tick off a few forms. Nonetheless, it was done, and we were off out into the lagoon, heading for the pass. This is my second dried mango. And that crazy freak chance of coincidence, we all separately went shopping just before the boat left and all accidentally came back with two kilos of dried mango each. <laughs> it's no wonder everybody wants to come up and hang out in here in the winter season in New Zealand. The weather is fantastic and the water is calm in the lagoon. But, obviously as soon as we reached the pass, that's when the ocean swell hit us. Now, I'm not going to say it was a storm like last time. We did have the boat pushed hard to windward into a two to three meter swell. It's really interesting to compare and contrast the modern boat design of the Genoa with the very old school heavy boat design of the Tiana. The first time in the Tayana we were seeing gusts of 39 knots and maximum boat speeds of 11, whereas the Genoa we actually hit 13 and a half knots with a code zero up and a comparatively mild 20 knots. With regard to the hull you could definitely tell the extra weight in the Tayana. When the Genoa used to drop off the back of a wave it would often bang as the white hull surface hit the water, whereas the Tayana used to sink down into the wave which made it more comfortable except for the fact that it would ship a lot more water over the front of the boat so it was way wetter so it really just goes to show every boat's a compromise but there's no doubting that we did this trip in seven days on the Genoa and it took us 10 days on the Tiana so in some ways a fast boat is a safe boat just due to weather considerations. Now to be honest I had actually been making sure I did some extra sailing before this trip to try and get used to the motion of the boat but unfortunately the punching hard to windward got me and I wasn't the only one that succumbed. Ended up throwing up my dinner. That was the scene of the crime. Being so lethargic and having taken two seasickness tablets at that day. I'd literally moving seats on the boat was like a major mental effort so I could be thrown up over the back of the boat again soon. Now I'm going to break it to you, there was something really fantastic about this trip and that is that because we had four people on board it meant two hours on, six hours off. So 
just how good this two hour watch is. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot easier. It's way easier, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's always that last hour that I'm feeling like I'm going to fall asleep, so, The yeah. last hour is like death. Although, actually, <laughs> I'm actually getting used to it now. Although, I will say, this has now become an hour watch because Mike is up early today. <laughs> <laughs> Seems pretty common that about halfway through the trip it's time to refuel. That was a misunderstanding of mine that sailing blue water was about taking whatever weather came. Actually sailing blue water is mostly about just getting the hell across as fast as you can to try and avoid bad weather. And that's why I think more modern cruising boats do tend to use fuel because they'll just motor sail to keep the speed up and that's what we did here. We never let the boat go below 7 knots. It's time to settle that question, did we catch fish? <laughs> come hither, come hither, come hither, Mr. Fish. <laughs> that reel went off I was like oh yeah fish on yeah quarter mahi mahi it's really just the iconic blue water fish isn't it and the colors are so amazing Lunch is ready. after all the excitement of catching the fish we lapsed back into our quiet watch routine really and that's actually just quite a relaxing thing about ocean going sailing you know what do you do off your watch anything you want you can read a book, you can sleep, you can chat with people, you can play cards. And there's such a lot of time, it just happens quite naturally. Uh, teacup. 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 That's fantastic. Say it again. And? Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. That's super realistic. <laughs> Somehow you've got to get used to being awake in the middle of the night and sleeping in the middle of the day. But at the end of the day, you're messing around with friends and just enjoying sunrises and sunsets every day. In a 20 knot breeze over the stern quarter and a code zero downwind sail up we smashed it coming to New Zealand in the last few days. It wasn't long before we were sailing down the east coast of the North Island in the dawn light. And with land in sight the cell phone coverage came on. All of our phones lit up and the spell was broken. Really for me that's the point when the voyage is over. You're back in contact with everything. Definitely back in New Zealand then rain to greet us. Fantastic, thank you Auckland. 
In truth, it was a bit anticlimactic reaching Auckland. It always is a little bit after such a big adventure. Putting up the queue flag, starting to stow things away, getting the boat ready for port. When, all of a sudden... Yes, you're welcome. You can come play with us. Yes. That's it. to play. Come on guys, come and play. That's it. Yes. How many are there? Holy flamoli. Oh, good boy! Who's a good boy? And then just like that, with a snap of the fingers, they all left. From there on it was a quiet journey home into customs and then taking the boat back to its home port of Half Moon Bay in the East Tamaki River in Auckland. Big thanks to Daniela, big thanks to Anna and a big thanks to Captain Darren for having us aboard. It was a fantastic trip and I added another 1200 nautical miles to my goal of reaching 5000 nautical miles.